many ways and preparation is obviously spiritual uh, but there's some physical tips and, and, and tricks that we should be doing that often are from the sunnah themselves uh, so that we can have as productive and fruitful uh, and safer Ramadan as, as possible um, so I will yes there we go so yeah so my name is Sufyan Yunus I'm a GP in Buckinghamshire um, uh, and this this talk is um, sort of being done with the umbrella of ASCC, but then also under the umbrella of the British Islamic Medical Association, uh, which is a, a, an organization that's run by volunteers uh, from the various allied medical fields, so doctors, pharmacists, uh, dentists, etc., nurses, um, uh, uh, that when we work to kind of serve um, uh, the Muslim communities, so both the healthcare professionals, but also the public, uh, in terms of giving advice, policy, uh, networking, etc. Um, and that's the mission statement of BIMA, so inspire our members to unite in the service of our patients and our profession. So you may have seen some of the work BIMA has been doing in the COVID uh, crisis, uh, uh, advising masajid, for example, or uh, sending out public messages about, say, the vaccine, uh, releasing videos, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, so that's who they are. I'm I'm just a volunteer there, and there's there's sort of uh, other people who are who are doing a lot of the hard work. Uh, and this is a campaign, uh, the Healthy Ramadan campaign that Bima runs yearly. Um, actually, I did this talk. Uh, it's it's the the slide some of you may be familiar with a few years ago at Bima, uh, sorry at ASCC in in person. Um, um, I think the, the, the disclaimer here and uh, I, the uh, sort of advice that they're just giving uh, is to say that what we're talking about here is, is general advice. It's not kind of specific medical advice. So it's always important to um, talk to uh, your own doctor, your GP, uh, and then also local scholars uh, for uh, fiqhi advice uh, as well. But um, yeah, and, and feel free to um, uh, kind of uh, uh, put in any questions if, if there's something I'm saying that may not be quite right or you know that you, you might know a, another medical or uh, religious ruling on. Um, um, so what, what are the aims for today? Um, and it's a bit difficult doing this without uh, an audience in front of me. I usually like to be quite interactive and maybe we'll try and do that. Um, I think there's a few names um, uh, on the on the list that I might be able to pick on. Um, but um, uh, the aims here are kind of to talk about the, the health dimensions of fasting, and that's both benefits, but then also some of the, the risks that we need to be aware of um, and how we can mitigate for those and how we can maximize on those benefits, inshallah. Uh, it's to maybe think about how we're going to plan our diet this Ramadan um, and think about things like exercise, weight management and, and smoking, um, uh, which, which are all, you know, uh, some positive lifestyle changes that we can enact uh, through the catalyst and the barakah of Ramadan. Um, we're having a bit of a focus on diabetes uh, as well, um, because uh, as many people know, we have a lot of diabetes, type 2 particularly, uh, in our communities, uh, so South Asian communities, Middle Eastern communities. In fact, it's uh, whilst there is a genetic disposition, it's something that we're seeing increasingly even amongst white British uh, 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 communities more and more uh, commonly. So um, it's something that we we want to have a bit of a focus on. Um, at this point, actually, I was just going to ask, I don't know if people can raise their hands on Zoom or uh, if if there's anyone even at the center as well. How, how many people either have diabetes themselves or um, uh, have sort of family, immediate family that have diabetes who are joining us today? So we've got two people at the centre, or three, um, including okay. people who have it and those who are family members. Fine, and I, I've got a raised hand uh, from uh, a brother Ibrahim as well, I think. Um, so that's very useful. Um, fine. So, so I, inshallah, I will, I will, um, uh, I'll, 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 I'll spend a little bit of time on that. And then, lastly, actually, just a bit about. Uh, obviously, we're in the era of COVID, the pandemic. Um, uh, and vaccination programs are, are well underway and, and, and actually many of you or some of you certainly may have already had the vaccine. Um, so that's something we'll touch on uh, as to kind of what to expect if you're invited for the vaccine during uh, the month of Ramadan and, and we can do some Q&A on that. Uh, so Aisha is at uh, 
uh, 7.45. Um, so we'll try and uh, finish the slides aspect of this, hopefully by, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour at the most, um, uh, and then allow a, a, a good uh, amount of time for Q&A, um, inshallah. So, so, so why do we fast? Um, I think the, the important thing, whilst I've, you know, started this conversation about the health benefits of, of uh, Ramadan and fasting. I think obviously this, the, the, the reminder that we like to start this talk by is actually it's it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, it's a commandment and, and you know, Samitna wa ta'ana, we're ready to obey. Um, and, and that's the core of it. And it's to that we may, you know, attain taqwa, closeness, God consciousness um, to Allah. And that's that's the kind of primary aim uh, and may Allah sort of uh, grant us that and, ex and accept it, uh, and, and accept it, any of other and preparation that we're doing now for for then. Um, the health benefits are there, but they're secondary. Um, uh, and, and obviously, fasting is something that is not just known to us in Ramadan. Inshallah, it should be something that's known to us throughout the the year, and that's a reminder to myself, um, particularly in in these uh, months, sort of when the Prophet would be increasing his uh, siyam. Um, uh, and, and again, you could see some of the actual health benefits of preparing and doing fasting now, such that when you're in Ramadan, you're kind of in gear. But you know, as is on the slide, you, you can see there's a number of uh, uh, times in, uh, around the year that's recommended to be fasting. Um, so what are the health benefits of, of, of fasting? Um, why don't we try it out? Um, I, I don't know if anyone either wants a text or you can unmute yourself and, and what health benefits do, do people know of fasting? Oh, we're getting silence. Not to worry, not to worry. I, I won't pick on anyone. Um, I'm sure some of you guys have got some answers. So, so th there are many potential benefits of fasting. And actually, modern science, modern medicine, researchers, nutritionists are, are sort of increasingly um, uh, sort of uncovering the merits of fasting. And, and the way that these are defined is sometimes slightly different to how we define fasting. But certainly a period of abstinence from foods so and not eating um, in particular has been studied uh, uh, and, and shown to help in terms of programs of weight loss, improvement in cholesterol, blood pressure control, blood glucose control, mental well-being, uh, and then things like uh, the control of habits, addiction, smoking being a big one, snacking, uh, etc. Um, there's a sort of a, a famous G, media GP, Dr. Michael Mosley. He's uh, done a lot to sort of promote intermittent fasting. And if you read his book, he actually talks about, uh, he initially talked more about the 5-2. So that's fasting two days of the week. Uh, and he actually says, you know, and you could take on the example of the Prophet Muhammad, who, sorry, Salam, who, 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 who uh, fasts on Mondays and Thursdays. So it's increasingly being realized for its medical merits. Um, uh, and, and we know that it, it does something to your system uh, that almost resets your metabolism and, and gets you in a position of, of greater health. And so they monitor cholesterol before periods of this and after. And actually, th the good cholesterol improves, the bad cholesterol goes down, uh, blood pressure improves, weight is kind of stabilized, uh, et cetera. So there are numerous you know, benefits and, and merits that we can, inshallah, try and uh, uh, attain from uh, uh, Ramadan, but but if if done in the right way, um, I think a, a big thing to talk about, and 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 sometimes these things are a little bit taboo in our communities. We have a number of people who smoke uh, in our community, uh, despite you know everyone knows it's not good for our health, and you know it's you know religiously as well, it's you know not something that's uh, 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 good. Um, but actually, you have a perfect key here, catalyst here, that if you are smoking. You're not for, you're not smoking then in the in the in the days. Then it's a good catalyst to cut down and eventually set yourself a target, whether that's in Ramadan, uh, in or the end of Ramadan, uh, or a few months later to kind of cut, 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 and then eventually stop. Um, because we know that smoking is actually a, a a huge sort of cause of premature death in 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 in, in kind of uh, all communities. Um, but then there are also some risks um, from fasting. 
and I say risks, that's, you know, take that word with a little bit of uh, a pinch of salt, um, but not too much salt, uh, but, but I need to come back to that, uh, but excuse the pun. Um, here's a, a study that was done in Pakistan uh, a few years ago now, so 2012, um, and actually they, they monitored, it was, uh, I think, particularly they monitored people with diabetes. And as you can see here, they, they, they looked at lots of different sort of studies and uh, sort of experiences and, and perceptions, but they, they monitored weight as well as part of this study. And you can see actually uh, some people lost weight, but actually uh, uh, more people stayed the same weight, uh, but a, almost a, well, a very healthy amount uh, actually put on weight in Ramadan. So we know that actually, uh, uh, if we don't do it right, it can have a detrimental uh, effect on our, on our health. Uh, so that's something to uh, think about uh, as we go forward. Um, again, so there are there can be more serious uh, risks of, of fasting, um, and and some of those are listed here. So dehydration. We're obviously not drinking uh, and, and eating uh, for long periods of the day, particularly in in countries where like where we are in the summer months, where you have long periods, uh, and 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 actually for a, you know a a, a fit and healthy. Uh, individual, um, that's you know not an issue. They've done studies to show um, that the absence of water doesn't adversely affect your kidneys, uh, for example. Um, but actually, if you're on certain medications, for example, diuretics, so those are water tablets. Some people might call them frusamide, um, bumetanide, these sorts of things that uh, release fluid from your system, make you pass more water, and then you're fasting as well. Then perhaps you're at more, a greater risk or if you've got kidney disease etc uh, again not necessarily a specific reason not to fast um, maybe but actually something to take caution on and, and, and actually have a chat with your doctor about um, um, interestingly they've done some um, uh, uh, studies on stress and, and Ramadan uh, and obviously that's a double-edged sword because actually we talked about the positive mental health effects uh, of uh, fasting and the other slide um, but sometimes with the sleep cycle disruption um, and the absence of food, that can affect our, our mood. And obviously, spiritually, that's a test for us. And actually, it's a, it's a chance for us to, to try and overcome that. But actually, for some people who may be suffering from stress, uh, otherwise um, may struggle with that, then, you know, sometimes that, that can be exacerbated. And, and, and we see that sometimes. Uh, sleep, we've, we've kind of just touched on, linked to that. Um, headaches are, are very common, and we'll come back to that a bit later um in in this presentation um heartburn with the kind of eating late and then sleeping and then waking up and maybe sleeping again after suhoor and all that sort of thing and constipation comes with the dehydration so often people will find and particularly um the uh sort of uh, well actually it happens to anyone but more in the elderly um uh, and 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 as we get older our our bowels our intestines they they slow down anyway um, and with uh, Ramadan, when we're perhaps a bit less active, we're not walking as much, we're not drinking as much water, uh, we're not having as much fiber, uh, that can become more of an issue. Um, uh, and then depending, like I touched on, maybe kidney disease or uh, maybe people with heart failure, these sorts of things, diabetes, and we'll come on to that, uh, sometimes those can be affected by Ramadan. Um, and so it's important to kind of be... Uh, you know, realistic and uh, um, uh, I think uh, not just think everything is great. With, I mean, everything is, is, alhamdulillah, is, 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 is beautiful about the month of Ramadan, the spirit of Ramadan, but the actual act of fasting has specific um, uh, cautions that we need to be careful of. And, and we know that again from, from, our, from our deen that, uh, uh, you know, uh, there are exemptions. Um, so I've kind of touched on some of this. Um, so there's people who are maybe more at risk um, in Ramadan, and, and that's not everyone under these diagnoses. And there'll be other diagnoses uh, that you know aren't covered here. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, and, and some of it will be related to medication. Um, so uh, if you may have uh, strict patterns or timetables for taking your medication. Um, uh, which if you're fasting, obviously you can't take without breaking a fast. And so therefore you're, you know, if you were to fast and miss that dose, that's potentially detrimental, that's potentially a bad thing. Um, so that's things, some diabetics, not all, and we'll come on to that. Asthmatics, and, and again, it's not a question for me, but, you know, I think uh, a lot of, or 
uh, there are probably uh, opinions, but um, uh, many people will say that taking an inhaler, for example, during the fast um, may invalidate the fast. So, you know, thinking about when you take your inhalers, if you are fasting, if you've got bad asthma, if your asthma or your COPD has taken you to hospital, etc., then that's something that you need to kind of really think about. Um, heart failure, again, where medication you might be taking throughout the day, you might be on those water tablets, etc. Mental health, again, so the regime and the timing with people with bipolar disorders, schizophrenia, uh, needs to be quite specific. Um, uh, glaucoma with eye drops, um, though, again, they, uh, I think the majority opinion is that it's fine to take those and we'll come on to that, etc., etc. Pregnancy and breastfeeding, again, that's a, a discussion uh, to be had. There are exemptions there if you don't feel up to it, but if you can, then, then, then sort of again. But these are sort of some groups that you need to kind of be careful and look after yourself uh, and, and, and try and plan as best you can if you are going to fast. So um, what's the impact of, of fasting on the body? Um, so usually your body enters into a fasting state around eight hours after the last meal. So actually that's quite a long period of time if you think about it. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes when I'm at work or, or, or maybe not at work, probably at home, within a couple of hours of eating, you're, you're, you're ready for the next snack or, or, or whatever it might be. Um, but actually it's eight hours before your body enters into a fasting state. Um, and that's why there's some of these diets which talk about the 16-8, which is where you fast for 16 hours of the day and you only eat for eight hours of the day. And that's shown to be uh, beneficial for your metabolism, for your cholesterol, uh, lowering your risk of getting heart attack, uh, diabetes, etc. Um, so actually, yeah, you have to have eight hours before you're beginning to see some of these changes uh, affecting your body. Um, and what happens in that scenario is that the blood, the sugar uh, tends to get used up in that time, glucose. Um, uh, and we then start to um, uh, uh, use other energy stores like fat or, uh, or sugar stores, glycogen, these sorts of things. Um, and uh, um, uh, that can sometimes have an impact, particularly if you are on certain medications with diabetes, but we'll come on to that uh, a, a bit later. Um, just a, a slide here about medical exemptions in Ramadan. Um, and I've kind of already talked about this on the slide before, but we know from, from the Sharia, that um, uh, you know there are exemptions um, uh, for people, so you don't have to fast Ramadan. And in fact, you know, as we're taught, and I think that this is on another slide, um, if there's a rukhsa, you know, there's almost it's it's almost better to take it. Um, uh, but obviously, that's an individual decision in, taken in conjunction with it, getting advice from your scholars and and your actual medical condition with your doctor on board. Um, but particularly if you've got a high risk of complications, if if you don't eat or drink during the day and you're gonna, you know something's gonna happen, you know your blood sugars go low already with your diabetes, for example, or you're prone to fainting, um, or you're struggling with your breast milk supply um, uh, with breastfeeding, then, you know, uh, you know it's, 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 it's fine um, uh, uh, not to fast. Um, and, and there's, again, it's not for me to go into any details, but, um, you know, there is the uh, uh, fidia um, there um, uh, where uh, if it's a reversible thing, so it's it's something that's like pregnancy or breastfeeding, for example, then you can make up the fast at a later date, or if it's something that's going to be continuous. But again, I'll, I'll leave that for another talk, inshallah. Um, and how we do this is, 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 as I've touched on, it's it's you yourself. So actually the advice that, you know, someone can give you is going to be different for you know two people with mental health issues or two people who are pregnant or you know everyone's got their own consti constitution and, and 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 what they can take um but also it will depend on the medicine so uh, and by that we mean uh, the the type of disease that you may or may not suffer from or medical condition or me the actual medicines that you're taking uh, and then obviously the the the, the fiqh and the uh, religious opinions so it's kind of putting all of those into place and it's not a one size fits all. So that's why we're trying to have these sorts of presentations so that uh, these sorts of discussions can happen and you can plan for it in advance, inshallah. So you are what you eat. This is what um, some of you will remember from school days. 
uh, you know, the balanced diet. Um, and, and this is kind of what we're going to be uh, maybe touching on uh, to begin with. There's more general advice for everyone. Uh, so regardless of health conditions as to how we can kind of maximize uh, um, uh, our Ramadan and, and, and make it as healthy as possible. Um, so here we've got the different food groups. I won't go into too much detail, but you've got the fruit and vegetables. You've got the uh, carbohydrates, which is the potatoes, the bread, the rice, the pasta. You've got dairy. Um, uh, uh, and then you've got things like your uh, beans, pulses, fish, eggs, you know, proteins, um, meats, chicken, that sort of thing. And it's about, you know, trying to work out which of these do we need to have slightly more of and which do we need to have slightly less of in, in Ramadan to, to help us out. Um, uh, there's also water. That's a key uh, part of this. Um, and then there's things about sort of less healthy foods that we need to uh, avoid. And you can see this very slight uh, slice of the of the plate uh, or portion of the plate, which is oils and spreads. So that's butter and, and oil and ghee and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and, 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 and just uh, making sure that we, we realize that the portions of these. Now, as a rule of thumb, I'm looking at this and what I would say would should form the, the, the bulk of what you're having is, is actually the, the water, the liquid. That's really what you need in, in this month. And actually, prehydration is is sometimes shown to be beneficial. Um, so uh, sports athletes do this, um, where they will drink lots, uh, and they'll often drink isotonic drinks, but before an event. Um, uh, so in the weeks, even before days and weeks before the event. Uh, and actually, there may be some benefit. The, the, the kind of jury's out in terms of the actual data uh, or research, but. but you know, even from now getting your drinking up, so you're used to drinking a lot of water is, is going to be important. And then again, looking at these things, we we're going to need to have a lot of fruit and vegetables. Why? Because it's really good for your gut. It's really good for your bowels. So being able to go to the toilet to do a number two uh, regularly is, is dependent on having, you know, fruit and veg with skin on as much as possible. Uh, and that's going to help. And things like dried fruits will help with that. We have that anyway with the dates, alhamdulillah. Um, in Ramadan, but, but other things like prunes, April, dried apricots, etc., is going to be really useful. Um, the carbohydrates here, we need to be careful. So carbohydrates we need to think about is the brown uh, uh, type. So the, the kind of the ones that break down very slowly. So if you have white rice or white uh, flour, um, uh, these sorts of things, um, the, it breaks down very quickly. So if you have that at Sahur, um, you know, within a few hours, that's going to be gone. Whereas if you're having the brown breads, the brown rice, etc., it's going to be around a lot longer. Also, it has greater fiber, which will, again will help with things like constipation. Um, but um, yeah, we'll come back to that. So I'm just having a look here. Let's just bear with me. Are, are, you, are you all with me? Any questions so far? Imam Muhammad, are you are you hearing me? Uh, and and you're all with me. We're all with you. Uh, okay. Any questions? Uh, <clears throat> uh, what about the medication if I'm taking? Uh, I'm diabetic, and I'm having a medication uh, at lunch time, so I don't for that reason. If I if I don't uh, take medicine on time. I might have my sugar low, so that's, uh, that's the reason um, what I should do for the last three, four years, I'm not fasting at all. Um, so I think I heard that, um, but it was uh, the question was about medication. Um, if you don't take medication, your sugar goes low. Um, advice regarding that and food to help prevent that, is that right? Is that right? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, uh, Uncle, are you are you do you fast in Ramadan at the mo uh, moment, or you avoid it, or sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't? What's the? Avoiding. Yeah, uh, avoiding. Yeah, yeah. So this we'll come on to it a bit later, uh, Uncle. If that's right with diabetes. Um, if you are at risk of getting low blood sugars, um, then I would advise you to avoid it um, to be on the safe side, because low blood sugars aren't a um, a small thing they can cause uh, and and this isn't 
it's difficult for me to give you specific advice because it depends on the medication you're on. Some medication like insulin, glycolazide, these sorts of things can uh, are, are more at risk of causing you to get low blood sugars. And low blood sugars can be quite serious. They can get you into hospital. They can cause seizures and, you know, even very, very uh, uh, at extreme. It's not common. It's not, not common, but, you know, it can even be fatal. So um, uh, I think, you know, if, if that's the scenario, then I think you're doing the right thing. And uh, Imam Muhammad can can and say better but um uh, you know it's 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 better for you not to if there's that risk um um so you know uh, uh um, unfortunately there's no food that's going to last the 12 hours or, or or even eight hours um for the whole day um so but that's something to have a chat maybe with your gp if you were thinking about fasting if you're if you're the type of diabetic who monitors their blood sugars for example um doing monitoring your blood sugar more frequently in Ramadan if you're going to fast and then you know uh, if you are going to become low then you can break your fast and you know uh, that sort of thing um, I, I'll, I'll carry on um, I think this slide says the top of my screen is cut off I think this says suhoor um, let's have a look yeah it does say suhoor um, and, and I think you know some of you will already be aware of this but um, thinking about, you know, wholesome foods, so non-processed foods, um, thinking about a moderate size, uh, so not, you don't feel like you need to eat for the whole day, um, and I think some people try that, um, but actually it's not going to, it's not going to work, you're going to get into other issues like heartburn, um, sleep issues, um, dehydration, um, so I think just being careful about your portion sizes, um, um, fiber rich we've kind of touched on that because if something is brown brown bread brown pasta wholemeal pasta etc it's going to digest slowly so you will slowly get some release of energy throughout throughout the day um plenty of fluids is is the big thing um and then try and take uh suhoor as late as possible um and try and wake up for suhoor as well which, both of which are encouraged and and and, and, and of the sunnah um um because if you're just relying on the calories that you've eaten from iftar, it's not going to be enough, and you're going to run into thing, issues like headaches and, and tiredness much more. Um, so, so those are the sorts of things in in, in suhoor. Um, I think as part of this is is thinking about fluid-rich foods. So that's at suhoor and iftar. Um, and and many people we do this anyway. You know, a lot is customary. People will break their fast with fruit chart, and that's that's an excellent thing to do. So fruit salads with Lots and lots of uh, uh, water-based uh, foods like uh, fruits, like watermelon, for example, grapes, etc. These are really good. Soups, um, stews are, are obviously very good. Um, and 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 this is all about trying to maximise the fluid intake um, that that you're having, uh, and and just trying to. And they've got a, uh, this little infographic here, so you know how much fluid can you get in and, and 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 just trying to remind yourself as much as possible to have lots and lots of fluid you know primarily water uh, is is best um trying to avoid teas coffees uh, because that's got caffeine in it and that's going to make you actually dehydrated it it makes your kidneys produce more urine and, and get rid of water which is not what you want in ramadan um so yeah so you know uh six points of hydration here they've got so upon breaking the fast obviously we, we do that anyway very thirsty before having your main meal that's a really big one actually um uh, often we eat first and drink later but actually drinking first means that you're going to get a lot of water in uh, it'll stop you from overeating which is the tendency in ramadan for some of us um, um uh, and it'll help us have our fluid intake before getting full after your meal if you can uh, keep you know a bottle of water with you if you're in the mosque or you know doing your bath at home wherever that might be um, and keep on sipping on it uh, and then before starting suhoor again so before your meals have water um, and then just before you kind of are um, uh, starting the fast um, so these are some examples of what i've been talking about complex carbohydrates uh, i'm conscious of time here um uh, so uh, these are um sort of brown breads with seeds and that sort of thing fruit and veg uh, porridge um oats that sort of thing um again so we're, we're talking about iftar here um and uh, sort of 
obviously there's the sunnah of breaking with 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 uh, with a date uh, um, and and then having some fluids uh, pray your maghrib uh, on time and then think about a light healthy balanced meal think about sort of high fiber foods uh, and think about lots of lots of fluids cutting down on deep fried fruits um, uh, we are notorious for you know the the kind of uh, samosas and um, uh, these sorts of things um, but um, they, because they're fried, um, even shallow fried things can contribute to indigestion. And you're going to be more prone to getting indigestion in Ramadan because you're not having much fluid during the day. Um, so try to grill things, bake things, steam them or dry fryers. So some people have got dry fryers um, uh, and those are much better, um, uh, particularly in this month, but the whole year round. Um, uh, try and so avoid things like, you know, high sugary things um, uh, and actually some some dates are very sugary but they're complex so they, they break down a bit slower they've got fiber with them um, but choose fruit and vegetable instead of you know biscuits chocolates uh, sweets that sort of thing um, because they also give you lots of vitamin and minerals that you're not going to be getting that you wouldn't get from these sugar things and, and sugary drinks as well avoid don't feel like your sugar is going to be low if you're not on medication to lower your sugar you our bodies don't get low in sugar so even if you're fasting it takes we sometimes do investigations on patients where we have to starve them for and there's a reason for it we're not just torturing them we starve them for 36 hours and their sugar we have to we monitor their sugar and monitor and they don't a human a healthy human who's not on medication to lower their sugar will not have low sugar for you know for plus 36 plus hours um uh, so don't feel that you need to have lots and lots of sugar in there you know everything that you eat uh, so the bread the rice the potatoes has sugar in it it gets broken down fruit and vegetables have it as, as well and we've talked about the coffee as well um a note about physical activity um so uh, we get questions about you know should i or shouldn't i be doing um you know exercise in, in ramadan i think it's important to be keeping active um that's good for many different reasons. Um, it's good for your bowels. Uh, I'm talking a lot about constipation today because it's a very common question. Um, actually, if you're walking, uh, that helps when you walk, it stimulates the, the, the intestines, your bowels inside your stomach to start moving. Um, whereas the less you're active, um, uh, the, 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 the slower they will be. So that's important. In terms of those who might be going to gyms, those who might be um, kind of going for runs, these sorts of things, I mean, some of you will be well versed. You've been doing this for a long time anyway. When is the right time? I think that's a difficult question to answer. It's different for different people. Uh, so some people will say and find it's better to do it just before iftar because they know then they can have water. Some people will be feeling very lightheaded at that point and will struggle and will want to do something after iftar, uh, but before suhoor. Um, so, so there's no right or wrong. Uh, that I have, um, but if anyone's got any other suggestions or tips and tricks, maybe you can share that at the end. Um, so it mentions here avoiding rigorous exercise. Obviously, that's you know we know of Muslim sports sports athletes who who kind of you know do high level um, uh, exercise whilst uh, fasting. So again, I'll leave that for you. Um, um, but just being careful that you know you're going to be more likely to 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 to, to get tired and dehydrated. Uh, and then a note about oral hygiene as well uh, before we move on. Um, so uh, making sure that you're looking after your teeth, um, particularly with sleeping and eating, you know, making sure that before you go to sleep, um, you're kind of brushing and flossing and, 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 and using mouthwash and that sort of thing. Um, we've obviously, again, have the sunnah of the miswak, so have that to hand during the day. Um, uh, and then sort of uh, uh, avoiding physio or acidic drinks, which, which may help as well. So then uh, I'm conscious of time just in the last sort of five minutes or so, just touching on diabetes. Um, so there's potential risks of fasting with diabetes and it, and it really depends. Uh, and I don't have time to go into the details of this and we can do a separate session at some point if, if there's appetite for it. Um, um, but the risks are is that if you're not taking your medication, you can get something called hyperglycemia, which just means high sugars. Um, uh, and that's potentially serious. Um, um, 
And actually, if you're not eating, uh, so you're not eating and drinking uh, and you're on insulin or you're on, say, glycolazide, for example, uh, then uh, uh, there's other medications as well. Um, you are at risk of getting low blood sugars, which can be serious uh, as well. And you can get dehydrated. Uh, you're more pr prone to getting dehydrated. Um, so that's that's important. So, so the main advice that I'm going to give today, um, because it's impossible for me to give specific advice to you all, as I don't know your history, how your sugars are, et cetera, your, the medication, is have a chat with your diabetic nurse at the surgery in particular. Uh, if you're under the GP surgery, um, so it's usually a diabetic nurse or a di what, the diabetes doctor, uh, di diabetes GP um, in the surgery. Um, or um, if you're under the hospital, then speak to your diabetic nurse there or the di diabetologist uh, and, and get their advice. And, and these sorts of guidelines are becoming more and more prevalent. So even non-Muslim diabetologists, GPs, diabetic nurses, etc., are becoming more aware of the fact that people want to fast Ramadan and you know many diabetics can fast in Ramadan many can't but many can and it really depends so trying to get that sort of uh, advice there are guidelines available for clinicians uh, compiled by um, kind of specialists uh, uh, in this um, so they should be able to give you some advice that's not just uh, blanket advice but it's tailored to you so they'll say you know if you're on metformin you can take that, you know, earlier in the day. If you're on it twice a day, you can take the second one later, uh, and that should be fine. And sometimes it's a case of doing a trial. So in in these months uh, or, or month uh, or less, actually, um, you know, do some trials and, and see how you feel, sort of thing. But again, it depends on how significant your diabetes is, whether you can tell if you have low blood sugars or not. Yeah. Some people, uh, some people can, some people can't. Uh, etc. Um, and, and then speaking also, the other bit of advice here, so speak to your uh, clinician, speak to the healthcare professionals. Um, and if you're told not to, um, and you know, maybe get a, if you want to get a second opinion, get a second opinion. But if you're told not to, then, then also actually, please do take that advice. Because as I've said, and I'm saying this as a Muslim who, you know, obviously I know the importance of Ramadan and the, the barakah of it, and you can still get the barakah of it. But if actually, if you're advised to, it's too risky and uh, then actually take the advice not to as well uh, and speak to a scholar and they will inshallah give you uh, 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 reassurance as well um, and, and, and that's um, uh, uh, the encouragement about fasting in Shaban as a test run uh, uh, if, you, if you need to. Um, how should I manage my diabetes? So take medication with your food, um, follow an individualized medication plan as devised by your doctor, so let them know you're going to be fasting um, and uh, um, uh, and they'll let you know what to do if so not all diabetics have to monitor their blood sugars um but if you're uh, ha on insulin for example or you know certain other medications then you you will be in the practice of or if you're type 1 diabetic i've not talked about that much uh, then you will be doing your uh, blood sugars regularly um so you might want to think about doing that a bit more often but again your healthcare professional should be able to work through that um a word of warning, again, particularly for those who are monitoring their blood sugars, if your blood sugar is less than, and, and sometimes you, you have different figures here, but the, the cautious rule of thumb is less than four. Uh, some people say less than 3.5, um, uh, some places even less than three, but I would probably stick with, to be safe, sort of less than four, so 3.9 or below, uh, then end the fast immediately and have so break your fast have something sugary as you will all know if you're you know been told to monitor your sugars um what to do again end your fast if your blood glucose level is going higher than 16.7 um because that means your sugar is going high that can cause vomiting that can cause coma not at that level but for, depending on the patient it can do it even at that level etc um you should never stop your insulin but speak to your doctor again you might need to change your type and things um so again, with diabetes, there's low risk. So if you're well-controlled diabetes uh, on certain medications, you might just need to change the timing of the medications. But there may be a moderate risk of fasting uh, in Ramadan if you're diabetic. So that's if you've got poorly controlled diabetes with lots of complications, you know, eyes, feet, kidneys, uh, heart problems, etc. cetera. Um, or if you're on insulin, because that's when you're on insulin, it's very sensitive to what you're eating or not eating. Uh, and you should definitely have a chat with uh, your team. 
and then it's the high risk so this is where people are you know in and out of hospital uh with uh, um uh, uh in and out of hospital with um uh, low blood sugars for example or you're having dialysis you've got kidney failure type 1 diabetics are slightly uh, more of a special case um uh, because you're reliant on insulin if you don't have insulin at all if you don't have food then you're gonna uh, either become very high or um and you're not, if you're not eating but having your insulin you might get you're more susceptible to getting low blood sugars so that's a special case but uh, feel free to ask questions and again hospital admissions um yes okay uh, yeah the question is my son is uh, uh 38 years old and he's also diabetic but he, yes he always uh fast and he's doing fasting regularly i mean every every ramadan and um, he he takes medicine medicine as a study time and a study time why I don't know whether it is good for him to carry on like this or he should not uh, uh, he should not uh, uh, do fasting Um, it's a good question, Uncle. Um, if he's been okay, he's not had any issues going into hospital, etc., and he's not, you know, had low blood sugar, then it might be that he's okay to fast. So just because you're diabetic doesn't mean you shouldn't fast at all. It all depends on how well your diabetes is controlled. Depends, Uncle, what what uh, medication he is on um, for his diabetes. Uh, because some of them say metformin, for example, that's a very common one that we have patients on. Uh, that's it's safe to fast if you're just on metformin uh, and your your diabetes is well controlled. Then you can take the metformin, you know, before your at sehri time, suhoor or iftar, um, and uh, and and that's you know potentially safe. If and if he's been doing it, then that's fine. But it's difficult for me to advise specifically on his situation. Because I don't know what medication he's on and what his blood test results are like, etc. So I'd advise him to, and maybe he's done this, but have a chat with uh, his 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 doctor, uh, uh, and it depends on his control and that sort of thing. So uh, just because he's diabetic doesn't mean he shouldn't fast, but it depends on the situation. Um, I'm I'm just going to wrap up very quickly here. So just to summarize, uh, we, we've kind of talked about the diabetes. So be careful about low blood sugars if you're at risk of getting bl low blood sugars speak to your doctor or your diabetes nurse um, it's worth keeping some glucose tablets to hand um, and if you're ill break your fast if you need to do some trial runs um, take home messages for all there's lots of b benefits in terms of your physical health uh, to kind of partake in in terms of, uh, of, of fasting both in ramadan and generally um, so let's make the most of it. Think about your diet. Be clever about your diet. When you eat, what you eat, um, keeping fluids up, uh, and that will help you benefit from the, the the physical benefits, but then also prevent some of the things like you know constipation, heartburn, etc. Um, so that's good. And then very lastly, I was just going to touch on uh, and uh, the COVID vaccine. So obviously, we're in the pandemic at the moment. Many of you will have already had your COVID vaccinations. Um, uh, so, I, uh, but some of you may be invited to have your vaccination uh, over uh, over the Ramadan period. Um, I think the first thing to clarify, and Bima are talking about this, and uh, they've got sort of a scholarly input into it. Um, and actually, it's completely fine for you to. Uh, it's it doesn't break your fast to have an injection. So it's a intramuscular injection that goes into the top of your arm, deltoid muscle, uh, and that doesn't break your fast in and of itself. Um, so it's completely safe to take the vac or have the vaccine whilst you're fasting. Um, and often, so uh, many people get, you know, you, you might get um, side effects uh, after taking the vaccine. And that's just common. We expect that. I had the vaccine. If you speak to a lot of people, uh, some, some of them didn't. Some of them did. Some of them just got a, a painful arm. Some of, them, some of them felt a bit feverish, like a flu-like symptoms. Um, but then it gets better. That tends, if it is going to happen, it tends to come on after a few hours. So actually that day, you're probably going to be fine to continue fasting. But if, you know, say the next day or that evening, you're feeling not quite right, headachey, et cetera, then obviously that's an individual decision. If you want to, you know, not fast for the next day, if you're feeling, only if you're feeling unwell, like I say, many majority of people feel completely fine. Um, 
then you may want to not fast that day if you need to take lots of water or take a, a, a paracetamol or etc. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Um, so don't shy away from the vaccine because actually if you get COVID, you're at much greater risk of missing the rest of your Ramadan and, and, and really harming your health, um, particularly in our communities, um, uh, than having a vaccine where at the most it'll be, you know, a couple of days, rarely maybe something more than that. But, you know, the thousands and thousands of patients that we've vaccinated uh, where I work, you know, uh, alhamdulillah, you know, we've not had any issues um, uh, in terms of beyond the, sim the the kind of mild symptoms that you get for a couple of days that then settle. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's what the only thing I want to mention. I'm going to stop there. This is thanks to the diabetes specialists and the nutritionists and dietitians and things who've helped formulate these slides. Um, so uh, I'll stop there. We've not got much time before the other. Uh, any questions, Barakulafi? Yeah, I, I've got blood pressure, which they can't control at the moment. And I take heavy doses, which is two doctors in, in the morning, two at night, uh, four mil, and 75 at night, which is the Lepladrin. Now, because I take my tablet at, in the morning and night, because I only have six hours from the uh, theory to Iftari, uh, sorry, theory to, sorry, Iftari to theory, is that too close to take all that medication in one go? In not one go within six hours? Hello? Hello? Sorry, uh, sorry, which medications are you taking? I, I'm taking 75 Lufatrin in the evening. Yeah. yeah. Plus uh, two by four uh, doxogen. And then in the morning, I take two doxogen. But what I'm saying is because I've got to take a morning and night, the gap means if they are in series only six hours. Yeah. yeah. So you can take all that dose within that six hours. Yeah. So with um, the Lozartan, you can just take that in the, uh, obviously you only take that once a day, isn't it, at the moment anyway. Um, it's the doxazosin. You might be able to take that just as a, a single dose, um, but it also depends on how high your blood pressure is, because if it's in dangerous ranges, uh, then I would just be careful. You might benefit from some blood pressure reduction by fasting. Ha have you been fasting in general uh, in the in the past? Yes, yes. yes. And how has it affected I've your? I've been very conscious of this, so I've never had a chance to ask this question. Yeah. You yeah. know, and and of course, you know, and the blood pressure has gone higher. I'm going to do it now, taking seventy five lithotrin. I'm not taken that in the in, yeah. in the time before. Yeah. So two things. Obviously, I can't give you specific oh, medical advice. Right. I don't know what you think. But what I would advise, generally speaking, uh, do some test runs in this month. You might already be doing that. Monitor your blood pressure and and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So before you go for the full thirty days, take it and 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 make if you've got a blood pressure machine, obviously just yeah. just track it and see what figures you're getting. Um, have a chat with your doctor. I don't want to say about the doxazosin without seeing what other medications and all the rest of it. Uh, but you might be able to take that all at once, uh, or they may be able to switch you to something that might suit. But you might have been on other medications in the past, so I don't know the ins and outs. But um, but yeah, have a chat. They might be able to. And and just explain the situation because if if you're going to fast anyway, you might as well get their advice, um, and uh, they can hopefully um, uh, uh, get the right sort of formulation for you. Um, in just one quick question, uh, follow up. You know, once you close your uh, theory. You kind of want to go to the toilet and pass water. You can't help it because yeah. you have to go. Does that mean that doesn't matter, does it? Because I'm over conscious of it, but it doesn't matter. But pur purity is already gone in your body. It's only the waste which is going out. Yeah, exactly. So what what you've what you've had to drink there is uh, is kind of uh, sorry. When you're passing water, that's from before anyway. So yeah, don't worry about it. Don't try and hold in that. Go to pass the urine. That's not a problem. Okay. We had one more question over here. Um, yeah. Uh, when when breaking one's fast, roughly how much water do you recommend uh, one should take? Is there like a sort of specific amount that you you normally recommend? So nutritionists and things will talk about having two liters in a day uh, of water, and that's a bit arbitrary. There's no kind of science behind that, and you get a lot of water from what you're eating as well. Uh, but I, I guess just in terms of you know an actual amount. 
it, 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 you know, it's difficult to say, but, you know, taking, you know, about 500 milliliters if you can. So that's two 250 mil large glasses of water uh, is probably a, a good thing to, to, to start. So have your have your date if you're going to have a date to, to break your fast and then have, you know, a couple of glasses of water. Um, but, you know, I, I don't want to give specifics because some people will struggle. They are elderly, some elderly patients really struggle to have so much water, um, although, you know, we should be trying uh, or maybe on a fl fluid restricted diet or, or that sort of thing. But yeah, if you can have about 500 mils, then, you know, pray, have your food, have some water after your food, uh, but stagger it over, you know, the, the time between when you're going to go to sleep or if you're up until sahur, etc. That might might be useful but yeah uh, well, it's a, it's as much as you can yeah the, the good point you made for me anyway and i'm sure others appreciate is try and drink before you eat for your theory because otherwise you're stuck and i find it very hard after stuffing myself and then trying to push a glass of water after it and so, so given the choice then so is it better for me to get as much water in and if i don't get enough food in which which if I'm weighing the scale, which way should I pick my scale? I, I would, I, I would say wa water is probably more uh, um, of, a, of a priority. Um, yeah, I think. I so. never knew that. Never knew. Uh, that. So I, I'm grateful for that. Thank you. No, no, that's fine. And then just being clever with the food that you do eat. So, like trying to do the the browner uh, yeah. uh, type uh, foods, the slower digesting things, the vegetables, the thing. Uh, not to say you, have, you can have uh, uh, sort of the chicken and meat. They're good for protein as well. Um, fish is is very good. Um, but yeah, just think about the portion size. But think about the water. And then you know, if you wanted to to to, so some people will have. Um, so sort of isotonic drinks, some of them have caffeine, so they're not good. Dirolite, actually some people, because they've got sort of salts in there, they've got sugars in there, but you don't need to do that. Simple water's fine and you're gonna eat. Uh, so, you know, uh, that's fine. Just have a, have a, have a balanced uh, meal. And can you have over, can you over sugar yourself? Because I don't eat any Indian food at all for the morning. I just have my wheat and things like that and, and call it a day and with water. So, so because you don't have that variety that you showed on your graph, does that, I mean, I've survived up to now to talk to you, so. Yeah. Uh, I didn't catch the first bit of the question. Can you? What, 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 I, what I'm saying, I don't have Indian food in the morning for theory. I just yeah. have wheat and eggs, you know, things like that kind of thing. And maybe yeah. the crisp to get the salt inside me. And that's about, about. No, that, that's good. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, and you don't have to have, you can have, you can have what, what you like, really. Um, you know, Weetabix is really, really good. It's fibrous. It's it's slow release energy. You've got the milk, which is fluid, but also protein um, with vitamins, etc. So so that's fine. You don't need to have rice or, 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 or potato or, or, or bread necessarily. But um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, just one question uh, linked to Brother Umar's question just now. Um, th does the body still derive benefit from water if you just kind of binge on drinking lots of water before Sahur? Because often you find you can't sleep afterwards and then it kind of all comes out eventually anyway. Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, so I, I kind of touched on it. It's that whole prehydration uh, that some athletes do. Um, I think in general, it's, it's better to have had the fluid um, because your body will be in a state of kind of wanting, after having fasted, for so long it's going to be your kidneys that will be programmed to be absorbing lots and lots of the water so not not peeing as much your 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 urine will be concentrated the reason why it's darker in color is because the body's saying you're not getting rid of the water i'm absorbing it uh, similarly you're getting constipated because your bowels are programmed to say i'm not getting rid of that i'm absorbing all the water so your your stool is harder um so yeah it, i think it's drinking as much as you know again don't go overboard um but you know drinking plenty and frequently uh is is, is going to be beneficial um and and your body will will get as the month goes on will realize that actually i need to conserve onto more and more of this water um, um so i hope that answers the the question okay so it's the the constipation is a problem you know, you can't, you can't get away from it. No. And somebody just have a spoonful of oil, you know, olive oil in the morning. Yeah. 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 
Is that too much? Should, is it bad in fasting to have a, a spoonful of olive oil or something? Yeah, you could do that. I'm, I'm not actually familiar specifically with olive oil. I've heard of it. Um, but if you want to take, so we often pres prescribe things like, um, is, and, and actually it's a, it's a kind of a, a traditional remedy as well. So um, ispagula, um, uh, husk, uh, or, or any of these sachets that you can buy, Cosmocol, Mobicol, uh, Macrogol, these things that you can buy. I have, over the, I have a thing called Laxido or something like that, powder. Laxido, yeah, exactly. So you could just take one of those sachets uh, in the evening time, you know, between iftar or mix it with water, because that's what you do, uh, and, 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 and prevent, you know, uh, and that's completely safe to do. Thank you. Does anybody have any any final questions? Okay, I take that as everybody's uh, well satiated. Alhamdulillah, you've you've filled everybody's stomachs. Um, Ramadan, Alhamdulillah. Uh, really grateful to yourself, Dr. Safian, for. Uh, enlightening us all this evening and to be here as well for this putting together this wonderful presentation um very enriching as well alhamdulillah so jazakallah khair to all of you um and inshallah we we look to, forward to i guess welcoming ramadan in a very positive and healthy manner inshallah Amen. and inshallah may you get the reward and the beamer team as well for everybody that benefits from this evening session and may you be able to partake in the rewards for every person's fast inshallah uh, in this blessed month of ramadan i mean jazakallah khair to everybody alhamdulillah it was a very well attended event um so grateful to everybody for logging on this evening inshallah um and we look forward to um seeing yourselves again for our future event next week we have our round table as well so please um have a look on the event bright um masjid event bright page again Inshallah, uh, which is going to be on the Quran um, in preparation for the month of Ramadan. So please do join us next weekend as well, similar time um, for our round table. Um, inshallah, if you're able to. Jazakallah khair to um, Dr. Safian once more and to all of yourselves for joining us this evening. May Allah accept our gathering here and may He allow us all to reach the month of Ramadan and uh, benefit from its um, manifold fruits and blessings. Amen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al-azim ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.